Cooking is obviously a huge source of joy for me and I love being able to share that joy with you guys. So I've put together a little compilation of my top three feel good recipes. These are some recipes that you might choose to cook this weekend that might bring you a little bit of happiness. Uh, whether that's a spaghetti bolognese with a little bit of a twist, whether that's a very comforting Thai chicken noodle soup, or whether it's my mum's super fluffy and oh, so addictive banana fritters. I hope that these are recipes that might bring you a little bit of happiness this weekend. Enjoy. Cheesy, beefy bolognese sauce takes hours, right? Well, I'm gonna bend the rules a little bit here, guys. This is definitely not your traditional bolognese. It is my spaghetti bolognese. So this is not your traditional bolognese, guys, but it is beefy and it is cheesy and man, it is so good. Uh, well, you guys tell me whether you think my version is good or not, but maybe don't tell your Italian friends to watch this one. Uh, all right, let's get started on the bolognese sauce itself. I have some tricks here. We're gonna start with the beef and I want lots of oil in my pan. And what I want to do here is get a really hard sear on my beef mince. So I'm going to go in, hot, really hot pan, spread the beef out. I'm going to add a little bit of salt here. Wow, a good dash of salt. And now leave it alone. I really want that beef to develop some really good sort of charry, seared beef flavors on the bottom. I want all of the juices to dry out a little. Um, and we're really going to intensify the beef flavor. Mum is like waiting in the wings, about to critique my bolognese. It's sort of based on my mum's, like her, the flavor of bolognese that she used to make when I was little, but it's kind of not that, it's different. <laughs> I'm probably going to get in trouble. Um, anyway, let's have a look at the beef. Uh, you can see that we're starting to get some color here on the edges and that's really kind of dried out a lot. Now let's have a look. Aha, see that wonderful color? That is pure flavor, my friends. Pure beefy flavor. And see how dry that is now? That's really great. I don't have any kind of like steamy, watery liquid in there. So now I'm gonna add in my pork mince. I'm a, a beef and pork combo kind of girl when it comes to bolognese. I like the extra fat that the pork brings. And now that I've got that kind of seared flavor, I'm not really too worried about the rest of this getting too much color. I just want to kind of cook it through and get that process started. Okay, so now I'm gonna add in my onion. See, if I added the onion and the garlic earlier, then that would have burnt when I was trying to get that really hard sear on the beef. There is method to the madness. And the garlic. Just give that onion a little bit of time to cook down a little and I'm gonna grab some carrot. So my mom always put carrot in her spaghetti bolognese so you know I kind of like to see the little bits of orange and you know have that little bit of flavor in there. So it's just my preference. Okay, so I've got nice, very cute little cubes of carrot. I love how they look in the finished dish. Okay, let's toss that through. Now you also notice that I'm using a really wide, shallow pan for this. And the reason is that I am trying to do this a little quicker than the usual kind of simmering for hours and hours that traditional bolognese would take. But that means that I want everything or all the liquids to evaporate really quickly. So that's why I'm using the wider pan because it gives us more surface area for the evaporation. I don't think that was too food nerdy. There's just, you know, a little bit of explanation required. Okay, so tomato paste goes in now. Just mix that through until you can see everything taking on a beautiful deep red color. And now some tin tomatoes, they go in. And now some stock as well, either beef or chicken, whatever you've got to hand. 
Okay, now here come a few little Marian special ingredients that are totally not traditional. Actually, if you want to watch a really lovely traditional bolognese sauce, you should check out the collab I did with my friend Sylvia, who made the most beautiful, very traditional uh, bolognese sauce. Uh, you can find that on my channel. But we're doing it the Marian way today, so I'm going to add in some star anise, some bay leaves, and some dried chili. So the star anise, really important one, guys. That one kind of boosts the meatiness, um, if you like, of the sauce itself. You won't notice it particularly, the flavor, but it kind of gives this really beautiful background hint of mysterious spice. It's a really good one to add. Now, I'm gonna add in some soy sauce as well because you know, I'm me. But the soy sauce is actually gonna add a little bit more flavor than just plain salt because it adds a little bit of umami as well. So I'm gonna add that in. Now a little dash of sugar. And some nice fragrant herbs here. Got some thyme and some rosemary. I just like to put the sprigs in whole so that it kind of infuses the flavor rather than peppers it too strongly with the leaves itself. Now I wanna turn the heat down and put a lid on. And we're just gonna give that 30 minutes. That's all it needs, not hours, just 30 minutes. Cooking. Okay, kitchen is smelling amazing. Let's take a look at what we've got. Oh, look at how luxe that is. I mean, you know, 30 minutes and it's so thick and rich and mm, we're gonna jazz things up even more. I'm gonna add a little bit of cream here. That's just gonna give us like even more luxe. Mm. Just let that cream kind of bubble away and infuse a little bit, a couple more minutes. And now one more little secret ingredient that I have for my bolognese is lemon zest. So this is gonna give us like a beautiful little ray of sunshine, make everything kind of bright and beautiful in our sauce here. And now I'm gonna take out those aromatics because they've done their job. So I'll take the chilies, bay leaves, herbs, and we want a little dash of white pepper here as well. It's the little things that make all the difference, guys. Now, if there's one thing that us Asians can agree with the Italians on, that is overcooked noodles, like the biggest no-no. So let's make our spaghetti nice, everyone. Boiling water, lots of salt, I really want this pasta water seasoned beautifully because I'm gonna use some of it to finish off my sauce as well. Spaghetti goes in and let's wait for that al dente moment. Okay, so let's check on this pasta. I want it just with that little bit of bite through the center. Okay, that's looking good. So now what I wanna do is grab some bolognese, pop that into a pan. And then in goes the pasta. I really want some of that pasta water going in there. And now this is where the little extra zhuzhing at the end is gonna make all the difference. I want that pasta to keep cooking in that pan. I'm gonna add a little bit of pasta water and by mixing and turning that pasta in that sauce, we're gonna create something luscious and beautifully glossy and rich. Oh, check out that magic happening right there. Now, cheese, more cheese. You can always do with more cheese. Get that out onto a plate. Now a little drizzle of some olive oil. Let's 
Some fresh basil is always nice, you know, a little bit more olive oil and cheese at the table. And oh, that is one epic looking bowl right there. I mean, mm. get out of town. That is mm, making me so happy right now. Honestly, oh, it tastes like that sauce. That meat sauce has been simmering for like days. That's how intense it is. On such a beautiful flavor, you've got all these little background points of interest. You've got the really kind of lemony, lemon zest flavor, which doesn't take over at all. It's just a really nice bright flavor. And then you've got some of those uh, herb flavors like the rosemary and the thyme, and that sort of background savoriness from the star anise. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right, forget about it. I am done. Me and the couch have a hot date. Want some? You're waiting. I know you've been waiting to eat this. <laughs> you want to try? Tell me what you think. I tried to follow your recipe. I really did, but I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> Mmm, very tasty. I taste all the flavour there. Beautiful. Thanks, very Mom. Tasty. Steaming bowl of Thai chicken noodle soup. This one, my friends, is truly joyous. And there are a lot of little steps to perfecting this at home, but I'm going to walk you through it. We'll get there together. This is my street food style chicken noodle soup. All right, so getting the ultimate perfect bowl of Thai chicken noodle soup does require a little bit of a journey, guys. Uh, it's not difficult, but there are quite a few little steps here, but we are gonna walk through it together. And can I say that the results are truly, truly worth the time. All right, let's get going on making our broth first of all. And this is where we're really gonna get a little technical to get the most clear, beautiful, pure chicken broth at the end. So we wanna start off with a whole chicken. And what I wanna do here is break down the chicken first of all. So we're gonna start with the legs. Now you don't need a massive cleaver like I've got here actually. You can just use a regular knife. We're gonna just gently cut through everything, but you know, I don't know, big cleavers are always fun. <laughs> so what we do is just open it up, kind of just separate that leg bone and you just want to kind of pop it. And then you can just get your knife and literally just slide straight through where you've popped that joint. Turn the chicken over. And there is our first little leg. Pop that guy onto a plate. Okay, now the wings. Now always I find when you're breaking down the chicken, it's a combination of slicing and popping or cracking. So I've just cracked that joint out and then slice through. I've got some other wings here as well, so I'm gonna add that wing to those. And now we're left here with our breast meat on the bone and we wanna take that breast meat off nicely. We wanna do it nicely. So just slice through the center, just off center actually, off, the, off that middle bone. And the way I like to do this is you just kind of like slice as close to the bone as possible. And just by thinking about slicing close to the bone, we're sort of getting really nice and tight, getting all of that meat off. Okay, and that is one very neat piece of chicken breast there. So these pieces of chicken, we're gonna deal with those a little bit later on so they can go away into the fridge. Now it's really this chicken carcass that I'm after for this first part of the recipe. So this guy goes straight into my stock pot. And then just to add a bit more flavor and gelatin from some bones and also some meatiness, I'm gonna use some wings. I don't like to use the meat as in the breast and the legs for the stock itself because we are gonna boil the living daylights out of these bones and the meat itself, all that flavor should come out and into the liquid. So what's left, not going to have that much flavor. I don't want to waste my chicken breast and chicken legs. So there is method to the madness everyone. There's stuff in the wings, it's got to go out into the liquid. So chop it up. 
<laughs> chop each wing into some smaller pieces here that's going to allow a lot more of the flavor and all that stuff that's like in there close to the bone all that's going to come out into your broth which is what you want okay now get these wings into your stock pot as well now pour in enough water to cover up that chicken Okay, so now we're gonna do a bit of like a false start, if you like, for our broth. I wanna bring this up to a simmer so I can get a lot of the kind of first bits of gunkiness out of the chicken, if you know what I mean. The stuff that comes up to the top. I want all of that out and then I'm gonna skim it off and get rid of that water and we're gonna start again. This is one of the little technical points that's gonna give us a really clear, clean broth at the end. I promise. Stick with me. <laughs> Okay, so there's all the gunky stuff that I was talking about. Now, I wanna get my chicken pieces out of that. And now I wanna rinse this chicken off because I really wanna make sure I don't have any of those bits and pieces that are stuck to the outside. And I also need to clean that pot up and throw away that liquid. Okay, and so here we go again, chicken in the pot. And now top this up with some water and this is going to be our broth starter so i want about five liters i'm doing today now, if you've got a really huge stock pot it would be great to double the quantities and do an even bigger batch because you know if you're going to go to the trouble of doing all these steps you may as well have some lots of backup broth that you can put in the freezer for later now bring this up to a really gentle simmer and I want to leave that to slowly bubble away for two hours. That's right, two hours, so it sounds like a long time, but really, I mean, you can watch you know, a movie on Netflix or something. It's not going to be too much of a hardship. Um, but what I don't want is a hard boil because a hard boil is going to make our stock cloudy and also going to release more of that kind of scummy stuff that we don't want. Now, while it is going, I want you to come back and check every so often and just use a ladle to kind of skim off any of those little bits that come up to the surface. Okay, so my broth is just about done, which gives me some time to fix up a few other little bits and pieces. First of all, we wanna make our condiments for the end. And for me, a Thai noodle soup has got to have the condiments. It's like truly make or break. One of the essentials is garlic oil. So I'm gonna take myself a fair load of garlic here, and I'm gonna chop this with the skins on because the skins get really nice and crispy in that garlic oil. I don't want all the skin, but just start chopping first. And you'll see any sort of large chunks of skin, I just kind of take those out. Now I want some vegetable oil here. Just any neutral tasting oil is fine. Rice bran oil, peanut oil is good too. And now just add in all of that garlic. And now you really want to keep an eye on things here, guys. Don't walk off and leave this to its own devices. Garlic will burn in like a second, the minute you turn away. So I'm just waiting for it to sizzle here. Try to keep it moving every so often. And then once that's just tinged golden, and I mean just tinged, just like this, take it off because it will continue cooking in the bowl. And there you go, that garlic will darken up and get really nice and crispy as it sits there. Now the other essential condiment, chili vinegar. So any kind of mild chili, I'm not after a lot of spice here. This is more about a bit of tang, a bit of color, and just some plain old white distilled vinegar. All right, your two essential Thai noodle soup condiments done. Now the other thing I wanna do here is make a few little extra special bits and pieces that are really gonna make our broth like super amazing. The first thing is a garlic coriander pepper paste. So I need some garlic for that first of all. And I just wanna pop those cloves so I can take the skin off. Now you will see this paste in a lot of my Thai cooking, a lot of my mum's Thai cooking. In fact, anyone's Thai cooking <laughs> generally. It's called um, Sam Gle. That's right, isn't it? Yes had to check. My Thai isn't exactly fluent and sometimes I pronounce things wrong and you guys love to tell me about that but um, anyway Samgle is uh, the name of this very ancient kind of paste. It's the basis of lots of curry paste, 
Uh, we put it into stir fries, we put it into like all sorts of things. It's like the it's like the European sofrito. Um, it's a base kind of flavour paste. There you go, some information there that you might find useful or not. So uh, I want some black peppercorns in here as well and some coriander root. Now I know a lot of you guys have had trouble finding coriander bunches with the root on the end because you're telling me that your local supermarket just chops them off, which is such a tragedy, my goodness. Anyway, uh, if you can't get one with the roots, just use some of that stem part. Now just pound that to a rough paste. Okay, so this is the situation that you're after, really rough. Now the other thing I want here is some lemongrass. Just one stalk and I purposely don't want to pound that because I don't want to make a really heavy lemongrass flavour in our broth. I just want it to be like a really beautiful background high note that kind of intrigues you as you eat the broth. Now I also want another aromatic, some ginger and some spring onion. Now an interesting one here is Chinese celery. So if you have a look, it kind of looks like a baby celery if you like. A lot thinner, stalks, and the flavor is a lot milder. So if you were to use some regular celery for this, please just use like maybe a piece of stalk that big, really small amount, because I don't want the celery flavor taking over and, and this one is very mild. So just a couple of pieces. Now, finally, we can come back to our beautiful little broth and oh, the smell of chicken broth simmering on my stovetop always makes my household so happy, makes me happy. Uh, now, I have been skimming this off and you can see um, we've got a nice sort of base here and I'm gonna add in all of those aromatics. So, in goes our pile here and now our garlic coriander pepper paste. Now just let all of those flavours make friends for another 20 minutes and then we're going to come back. Don't go away, come back. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to actually cook some chicken to put into our noodle soup and I'm going to use the breast here. I'm going to save these legs for something else like for some roasting or another dish because I don't really need all of that chicken meat. Alright, now those chicken breasts need 10 minutes tops. Uh, I like to keep my chicken really nice and juicy any longer than that and they dry out. Alright, let's fish our chicken out of there. Now let's pop those aside, we will work on those later. Now just give this one final skimming here. And I like to take out the chicken bits as much as possible. First of all, makes straining a lot easier. Now we can strain out our soup. And what we need to do here is a final seasoning adjustment. We've added no salt into here so far, so let me just have a taste and see where we're at. Mm. That is such a good chicken broth. Mm. And just that little pop of those extra little flavours at the end really makes such a big difference. Mm, beautiful. Now, I do want some fish sauce here and a little dash of sugar. Look, so if you were eating this at a street stall in Thailand, you would have some sugar there on the side that people kind of tip in as much as they like. I like to add it in here so that everyone's getting that little balance of the sweetness and the saltiness. And then I also want some salt as well. Okay, now let's see. Mm, that is perfect to my taste. You can add a little bit more salt if you would like. I like to serve fish sauce at the table so that everyone can season their own bowl perfectly to their own taste. So I 
purposely leave this a little under seasoned. Now let's give our chicken a little bit of attention here and this is my little trick I guess for instead of standing there like you know stringing the chicken apart uh, I just get my pestle or a rolling pin and just give it a good little bash. See how that kind of breaks apart the pieces here and then I can just slice and chop And now a few more bits and pieces for the end. I keep saying bits and pieces. There are a lot of bits and pieces in this recipe, but it's all worth it, I promise. Okay, first of all, I want some coriander. Some spring onion. And Chinese celery. Again, you could just use regular celery, but just not very much of it. Now for the noodles, I'm going classic street food style here and I'm using some semi-dried rice noodles. This is what we would call here in Thailand uh, senlek if you were ordering these from the street cart lady. Now I just want a little bit of that into my little spider here. But you could choose your own adventure when it comes to noodles here guys. You could choose an egg noodle, you could do a thicker rice noodle, totally up to you. And I want some bean shoots as well. I like to blanch the bean shoots in the water. I feel like they need a little bit of a taming down of their flavor. I don't want them to take over. All right, so into some boiling water. And because of these noodles, they're almost fresh. So they literally take like seconds. And get them straight into my bowl. And now finally, we're at the assembly stage. So let's make our perfect bowl. Okay, a little bit of chicken first of all. And all of our little greens. And that beautiful, beautiful broth that we have labored lovingly over. Oh, just look at that color. I mean, look at how clear it is. Yum. That is just perfection already. Doesn't that already look glorious? But now we have all of our little extra bits and pieces. So I want some garlic oil and some garlic, crispy garlic bits, some chilies and some of that chili vinegar. And always you would season with a little bit of fish sauce here. And then not always, but for me always, <laughs> a little extra sprinkling of some dried chili powder. Wow, and there you go. Oh, that even just, I can smell that vinegar and the chili and the garlic really getting in there and making friends with the rest of my broth here. Such a truly joyous smell. Yum. Okay, you want to mix everything together. And then, let's see how we've gone. It looks deceptively simple when you're just looking at the bowl, but when you taste that broth mm, mixed with all those little extra condiments that we've made and the herbs and, and everything, it's just like a little, a beautiful little symphony. Mm. I can hear. Mmm, so crunchy. Hi everyone. Today we're doing dessert. Just which one just like Noi. Mama Noi special banana fitness. Crispy, crunchy, but soft and sweet in the middle. I'm gonna show you how. Let's go. First of all, we're gonna cut the banana. I choose this one because there's a good flavour and it's sweet. Any sweet that banana. Just cut one first, like this. This one you can use hand, you know. Break up like this, see? Easy. Peel like this. And you just, it's nice piece like this, look. Cut all banana first. This one Marion favoured when she a little girl. Marion used to ask me to make her all the time. She said, Mom, Mom, can you make me banana fritters? She's so cute when she's little. I make her all the time. 
Now she's too big, she's not cute. She's bossy too. Now we're going to make the butter. Everything to come from the fridge. Must keep the flour cold, the egg cold, and the soda is cold. If it's cold, get to the hot oil, it's crispy. You listen to noise. I got plain flour here. This one called cake flour. Lighter than normal plain flour. This one make it lighter. And you can do it like a plain flour too. And you want some baking powder? Just mix a little bit first. It's a soda water. How come we don't have kitchen hand for this? I got to do everything around here. And one egg, crack in the bowl first, you know and know. Just get the fork, mix the egg first, a little bit. Make things it too smooth. Look at that. See, that's what we want. Not too thick. Now I'm going to wait for the oil is hot. Important because it gets temperature just right. Too hot to get be burned. Nobody want burned banana. Too cold we get oily. No one like oily banana. You the chopstick to test the oil. You see this? That's a bubble. That's mean ready. Now let's cooking. This is a fun part. Put all banana in the corn flour. And you roll like this. This is a corn flour, make it the butter sticky. Just put one or two or three in. I think I use a spoon to this one. See? Like this. And add into the oil. Just turning. Oh, look at the color. But dripping, you take it away. We leave it there, they will burn. Uh, to retain the color, cook to the nice and golden. You see how they pop up? Very nice. You check it, make sure it's not burning. See how light and fluffy? This one no is special feather. Is it nice and golden? Just take it out now. Look at that. Oh, cook all the time, this one. Family favorites, special Marion. Yeah, look at that. I show you how nice it is. You ready? Listen to the crunch. Beautiful. See? Soft in the middle, crunchy outside. Perfect. Just like noi. <laughs> I'm gonna serve up in my bowl. You can serve like this or with ice cream. A little bit icing sugar, make it look nice. There you go, another winner from Noi. <laughs> Blow it before you eat it hot. I can hear. Mmm, so crunchy. Beautiful.